Okay, so a particle moves in a straight line such that its displacement x meters from a fixed origin at time t seconds is modeled by this function. Uh, and over here, it gives us the conditions that t has to be a value larger than or equal to zero. Identify its initial position. So x will give us a function for its position. So all we have to do in the first one is we have to, in the x function, we're going to substitute in zero and find out what that is equal to because that will give us its initial position. So xo is equal to 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 12. So its initial position is 12 meters. And because this is a positive function, we would say that it is to the right. Uh, determine the velocity function, hence state its initial velocity and describe its initial motion. So to find its velocity function, that's going to be equal to the derivative of its displacement function with respect to time, meaning that I'll need to derive uh, t squared minus 4t minus 12 with respect to t, which would leave me with 2t minus 4. Now, if I want to then find, so that it's a function for its velocity with respect to time. If I now want to find its initial velocity, I then need to do VO, because I'm going to substitute zero in because the initial is when T equals zero. So two times zero minus four. So two, zero, minus four, I'm left with minus four. And this is a unit in meters. So it's meters per seconds. So I'm taking the unit from here. So meters, seconds. Uh, so if it's speed, so remember velocity is related to its speed. So this would indicate to us that it is decreasing in its speed. So therefore, velocity is decreasing by 4 meters per second. Okay, and that's describing its initial motion. Okay, uh, at what time and position is the particle momentarily at rest? Now, your particle being momentarily at rest doesn't have to occur when your time is equal to zero. We're looking for what time is your particle equal to zero. So we want when velocity is equal to zero, not when t is equal to zero, because in this case, we're going to be solving for t. So this is c. Okay, so now I'm going to state my function. Uh, 0 is equal to 2t minus 4. Move the 4 across, move the 2 across, and I'm left with 2. So therefore, t equals 2 uh, particle is at rest. Now, if you're at rest, that does mean that your acceleration is also 0. Fun fact. Okay, show the particle is at the origin when t equals 6 and calculate the distance it has travelled to reach the origin. So show the particle is at the origin, so it's at the start when t equals 6. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. We're going to let t equal 6 in this function. So 36 minus 24 minus 12 gives you zero. So therefore, true. Particle is at the origin when t equals six. Okay, so now we want to Calculate the distance it has traveled to reach the origin. So to calculate the distance, uh, we're going to do its initial or its end, either or. You know, find the difference between its initial minus
the when time is six. So when t equals zero and t equals six, we're going to subtract those distances. So then that's going to be 12 minus zero, so it's traveled 12 meters. So therefore, a particle has traveled 12 meters. Okay, and that's it.